Greetings Internet. Today I bring you a playthrough of Might and Magic, the first of the series called Book One, Secret of the Inner Sanctum. Uh, I'm quite sure I won't be able to play truly through this game, but well, we'll see. And now what you're seeing is the main menu. Let's press V. Here are the characters. Some are created by me, some are, well, just generally there. And you can see... Hmm. Well, actually, the name is hidden, but that was Legolas. Uh, yes, I named them after the characters of The Lord of the Rings, mainly because this game is actually influenced greatly by The Lord of the Rings. And I'm going to use only the six lower characters, which are, well, still level one. But that's because this is just my, well, like, third attempt to play this game. Well, that's what you get without reading the manual, I guess. And... Huh, this is how you get to the game. Actually, the main menu is quite misleading. It says to go to the town, you have to enter the number mark. Well, actually, if you enter the number mark, nothing happens. Why? That's because you have to enter a number. And to start in Sarpagal, you have to enter 1. If you press 2, you will end up in another city which you don't have access and thus you can't get in there. So we press 1 and start the game. Here's the quick ref. Now what I'll, I'm going to do is just to wander around aimlessly because as you can see we only have 300 experience. To get to the second level we need 2000 experience. And now I have cast a spell known as Leather Skin. It will defend us for probably one day. Now if in case you're wondering if well how I know all the numbers, well I actually look at the manual. All the numbers are there. Also, you might have slight problems uh, knowing where I'm going because, well, unlike the NES version of my magic, here you actually can't see uh, how you turn. It's exactly the same as movement. But hopefully you'll understand. Or actually you don't even need to. Now this is one of the places I haven't visited in my last test play, so I'm going to unlock it. Shagrath will try. He should be an orc, but he's an half-orc, because, well, you can't have orcs in your army. And here's an army. That's actually the only place you'll see some kind of a graphical uh, preview of what's coming. Now you can see uh, that there are four, three pluses near my uh, characters. That means that they can attack, and only they can attack from melee. Others can attack as well, but from a distance. That means either cast spells or shoot. And I'm wounded. That's not good. Actually, orcs and snakes aren't as bad. Because they're weak and they won't deal too much damage to us. Even though we're only level 1. So I keep fighting. Because, well, actually, it's A is named as attack. That's quite misleading because... A should actually be auto because it makes our character attack the enemy in phase. 
place A with whatever weapon we have. And I'm still wounded. That's not good. You should uh, try to keep your chargers uh, as healthy as possible because, well, if you have, say, three snakes like we have here, it's very bad because all snakes can pile one person and does the person will uh, fall very soon. So legless is our archer. We shoot a snake and we kill a snake. Aragorn is our powerhouse and we also kill a snake. And Shagrath, well, he's actually a robber, but he's, well, he's just good at everything actually. And we have only one snake. As you can see, we'll, we are slightly wounded, but I guess that's okay. So instead of healing, let's cast something more interesting. Or actually just save our spell points, because wasting them is not good. And... Warmer hits. Gandalf's turn. And yes, we'll cast a flame arrow or however it's called. Actually you want to remember numbers one and four because uh, if you have a sorcerer selected that means a flame arrow and if you have a cleric selected, that means pure wounds. However, it's better to just look at the manual all the time you're playing. Let's search. And yes, we have an iron chest. Shagrath is our robber, so we want him to open it. We've got a Belladonna. Um, let's try to equip it. No. If I'm right, that's um, that's just a flower. What do I do with a flower? Oh well, it's all fine. Anyways, if you're wondering how I'm playing this old game, well, I'm actually playing with a. Uh, with DOS box on the PC. Whoa, what happened here? Mm, darkness? Well, actually, that's not what you see in at least in the NES version. There you could see everything that is in the darkness instead of just seeing the word darkness. But, as you can see, it's slightly different than the NES version. And yes, we now have light. 1 and 5 gives you light. And another encounter. And this is one another um, difference between PC and NES versions. Uh, while in NES, poltergeists are very strong and you should actually avoid as much as possible but in the PC version they're... they're very weak you can very easily defeat as you can see we've already killed three of them and we're wounded but that's okay those wounds are very light and I guess I can cure them with my cleric But of course we still have enough hit points. As I know Poltergeist can only hit up to 6, so we're fine if we have at least 7 hit points. And... Oh... Yes. We have one. However, Undead sometimes refuse to drop anything, so... 
And if I'm right, we're now in... Um, well, we're probably under the town. So, let's see if we can get out of here. We really want to go up. If I'm right, this... Oh. Okay, we don't actually want to fight this. So, let's try and retreat. And yes! We are now at the exit. We go up to the town. So, yes. Here are stairs. There's no way to tell that there are stairs here, but... Well, I guess we're fine. <laughs>